I'm David Toman, author of NootropicsExpert.com, and in this video I'm going to share with you what I know about phenylethylalamine, or PEA as a nootropic. What it is, why we use it, the science behind it, dosage, and side effects. Phenylethylalamine, or PEA, is a trace amino acid. Your brain naturally converts L-phenylalanine into phenylethylalamine, or PEA. PEA is not at the top of most nootropic stack choices because its effects are so short-lived. But some neurohackers love PEA for its stimulant and mood enhancing qualities. Now the most famous promoter of phenylethylalamine was Dr. Alexander Shulgin and his wife Anna. Dr. Shulgin published PICAL, a chemical love story in 1991. PICAL is short for Phenylethylalamines I have known and loved. Phenylethylalamines are a group of phenethylamine derivatives which contain PEA as a backbone and these derivative compounds are formed by replacing one or more hydrogen atoms in the core structure. This class of PEA compounds includes amphetamines, empathogens, stimulants, psychedelics, appetite suppressants, bronchodilators, nasal congestants, and antidepressants. One of the more famous PEA derivatives is P or MDMA, or ecstasy. Now, Dr. Shulgin developed, tested, and published, he actually published the formulas, or the recipes, for 179 different compounds largely based around the structure of PEA in his book, PICAL. So in this video, we're going to investigate how phenylethylamine, or PEA, works in the brain. Phenylethylamine, or PEA, is a trace amine naturally synthesized from L-phenylalanine in your brain. Aromatic amino acid decarboxylase converts phenylalanine to phenylethylalamine. This is the same enzyme that converts phenylalanine into dopamine and it converts it at the same rate comparable to the synthesis of dopamine. But PEA is not retained in neuronal vesicles like dopamine is stored. Instead, monoamine oxidase B quickly degrades PEA. Now despite its short half-life, PEA as a nootropic seems to be effective for increasing catecholamine activity by boosting dopamine and norepinephrine. PEA can be found naturally in um, foods like cacao, uh, algae, fungi, uh, bacteria, as well as clover, beans, peas, and some food products like natto and eggs. PEA is also found in chocolate where it is produced during cacao's fermentation and roasting process. PEA binds to C-protein coupled receptors TAAR1 and TAAR2 receptors that are reserved specifically for trace amine use. These receptors are not used by other major neurotransmitters like dopamine or norepinephrine. Now the half-life of PEA taken as an atropic supplement is only 5 to 10 minutes because it's quickly degraded by monoamine oxidase B. Many neurohackers prolong the effects of PEA by using it with a monoamine oxidase B inhibitor, or MAOI, like aldapronil, hornadine, or oat straw. Well, first, phenylethylamine decreases depression. PEA naturally boosts the feel-good neurotransmitters dopamine and serotonin in your brain. Studies have shown that depressed patients, when tested, have lower levels of PEA. Now, in fact, some suggest that PEA deficit may be the cause of depression in the first place. One study had 14 patient, patients with major depression take up to 60 milligrams per day of phen, uh, phenylethylamine, or PEA, along with 10 milligrams of aldepronil for up to 50 weeks. Researchers found that PEA produces sustained relief of depression in a significant number of patients, including some unresponsive to standard treatments. PEA improves mood as rapidly as amphetamine, but does not produce tolerance. And the second way, phenylethylamine 
is a mesenthephalic enhancer. PEA is considered a mesenthephalic enhancer, because, which is defined as enhancer-sensitive neurons in the brain capable of working in a split second on a high activity level due to endogenous enhancer substances. This means that PEA stimulates the release of dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin in your brain. But unlike stimulant drugs like amphetamine, which release a flood of these neurotransmitters in an uncontrolled manner, PEA instead only increases the amount of neurotransmitters that get released when a neuron is stimulated by receiving an impulse from a neighboring neuron. In other words, the pattern of the neurotransmitter release is not changed but when the neuron would normally release a neurotransmitter, a larger than normal amount is released. The result is nearly instantaneous improvements in cognitive performance, attention, awareness, pleasure, libido, and a sense of well-being. Phenylethylamine is an endogenous or natural or built-in amphetamine. This mechanism of action is how prescription ADHD stimulants like Adderall work and the basis for many Schedule I drugs like MDMA, LSD, mescaline, and crystal meth. Phenylethylamine, or PEA, quickly crosses a blood-brain barrier once you take it, and you feel the effects right away. Activation of TAAR1 receptors inhibit the uptake and induces the release of dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. It's like turning up the volume of neuron activity. A higher concentration of all of these neurotransmitters increases feelings of pleasure, boosts motivation, improves memory and cognition, and reinforces impulse control. PEA naturally maintains and regulates neuronal activity, preventing over- or under-stimulation when working as designed. PEA and other trace amines prevent metabolic dysfunction, and neurological disorders. As a neurotransmitter, PEA acts like and looks similar to amphetamines and produces effects normally associated with taking a stimulant. But unlike amphetamines and because PEA is endogenous to the brain, side effects and tolerance are avoided. Now PEA works in an area of the brain associated with emotions resulting in feelings of pleasure, more drive and impulse control, heightened creativity, and better sensory perception. PEA improves libido, social behavior, a sense of well-being, and better overall performance. PEA is currently being studied and used for the treatment of ADHD, depression, bipolar disorder, cognitive dysfunction like brain fog and poor concentration. And PEA looks promising for treating addiction and eating disorders. PEA is rapidly broken down by monoamine oxidase B, so unless you stack PEA with an MAO inhibitor, you don't expect its effects to last. Most experience a peak within 15 minutes and sustain energy for about 30 minutes to an hour. If you're ADHD or ADD, you should see an improvement in mood, attention span, focus, and mental clarity. Not quite the same effect you'd get from something like Adderall, but with a side benefit of more sociability. Neurohackers report taking MIOI inhibitor supplements 15 minutes before a PEA dose enhances, or er, it, it means that the effects should last, of uh, PEA should last for more than two hours, and there's no crash like you'd normally experience with a stimulant, just a general feeling of well-being once it wears off. Now, some have reported that PEA helped them kick the habit of phenobit or caffeine without going through withdrawal. As a pre-workout supplement, PEA provides a more intense and focused workout. Older neurohackers seem to feel even more benefit when using PEA, likely because monoamine oxidase levels overpower dopamine the older you get. And using PEA, especially with an MAOI, helps restore dopamine and other neurotransmitters that are typically depressed with age. PEA is a great nootropic for study because you should feel less anxiety, fewer panic attacks, and less stress, and more motivation, a better mood, easier to maintain focus, and more energy. And some report food cravings subside, and it's easier to lose weight. 
Well, I've got a lot more research over on Nootropics Expert in the main transcript of this video on PEA. I've got one for PEA as an antidepressant. I've got another clinical study on PEA for ADHD. So if you want to see more studies on phenylethylamine or PEA, please go to NootropicsExpert.com and search for PEA or click on the link below this video and check out the clinical studies. Phenylethylamine or PEA suggested dosage for cognitive benefit is 500 milligrams up to 300 times a day. PEA has a half-life of 5 to 10 minutes, but the effects of PEA can be extended by using it with an amyloid-B inhibitor. If you do use a potent MAOI like L-Dapronil, make sure that you keep the dose low, like 2.5 milligrams, or you're in danger of inhibiting MAOA as well. And we'll talk about the cheese effect a little bit more next. Dosing more than recommended of PEA is not a good idea because you'll likely feel jittery, irritable, get a headache, feel nausea, and very possibly force your heart rate to dangerous levels. Now more on the cheese effect, the so-called cheese effect. Phenylethylamine or PEA is metabolized by the enzyme MAOB. And when monoamine oxidase, or MAO, is inhibited by eating cheese, chocolate, or um, by other prescription or natural MAO inhibitors, the combination can result in a potentially dangerous increase in blood pressure. Studies show that selective MAO-B inhibition does not produce this cheese effect. Examples of MAO-B selective inhibitors include low-dose L-Dapronil, Hordenine, Oat Straw, and I've got a few other extracts like Chinese licorice root extract over on NootropicsExpert.com. Do not use phenylethylamine if you are using a prescription MAOI like Marplan, Nardil, um, or Parnate, or have used one in the last 14 days. And do not use PEA if you have phenylcatenuria, or PKU. Too much PEA can cause irritability, nausea, amplified heart rate, jitteriness, and could be extremely dangerous. Remember, phenylethylamine is an endogenous, or natural, amphetamine and used irresponsibly could produce the same dangerous side effects as something else in the amphetamine class of compounds. Phenylethylamine is available in capsules, tablets, and as bulk powder. Do not make the mistake of buying phenylalanine instead of phenylethylamine, or PEA, because it's not the same thing, and is easily overlooked when searching for this nootropic. If you do buy, because they both come up, when you search for PEA, both of them come up. If you buy PEA in powder form, you should invest in a capsule machine and make capsules because PEA is a particularly nasty tasting nootropic supplement. So my nootropic expert recommendation for phenylethylamine is 500 milligrams up to three times a day. And that's my report on PEA. If you want to see links to the studies I talked about, go to nootropicsexpert.com and search for PEA, or click on the link below this video. There you'll find a full transcript of this video, and you'll find dozens of articles and all the well-known nootropics on Nootropics Expert. If you have any questions, or you want to share your experience using phenylethylamine or PEA, please use the comment section at the bottom of the post on nootropicsexpert.com. I respond to comments and questions at Nootropics Expert, usually, usually the same day. Now, if you want to see more videos on all the best nootropics used today, subscribe to this channel before you leave. I'll be putting up new videos on uh, nootropics and optimizing your brain every week. I'm David Toman, author of Nootropics Expert.